Hi everyone, thanks for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just saw them too, absolutely love this video. Please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. I think we all need a little pick me up as winter is in full swing. If you are experiencing winter right now, my guess is that you are in the same boat as me and having a few little struggle plants. So I figured today it would be fun. Well, maybe not fun. <laughs> it would be nice to just sit down and share some of the very common houseplant issues that I am having and of course how I plan to fix them. But first, before we jump into the video, I want to give a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creatives, creators, and much more. I just finished Revolutionary Self-Care, Embrace, Nurture, and Grow Your Authentic Self, hosted by Chidera, a best-selling author and activist known as The Sunflower on Instagram. I loved her gentle approach but very like to the point approach on how you can prioritize yourself back yourself and really um just focus on your own self-improvement and joy personally i really enjoyed the lesson on asking for help <laughs> that is a big thing that I struggle with. If you are interested in Skillshare, which you should be, Skillshare is super cool, you can click the link in my description box down below. The first thousand subscribers that click that link will get a one month free trial to Skillshare, which is amazing. So please go ahead and check that out. As always, huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get right into these plants. <laughs> okay, the first plant I wanna talk about today, and this is gonna be a very common problem, I think. I have my philodendron going back and forth here i'm gonna stick with golden goddess today but some people are telling me it's an upright lemon lime philodendron take your pick honestly the care is so similar <laughs> as you can see here she is not looking too hot she's very grumpy what's happening here is a very classic example of a very underwatered plant. This plant has been consistently underwatered, so she is extra grumpy. I think that with philodendrons, they are very drought tolerant, so you can miss, you know, water here and there, but I have been consistently ne neglecting this plant, so you can kind of see that she's sad. The telltale signs of this are these lower leaves right here. Let me focus. They are, ah! They are extremely droopy, like, look at this. And they're even starting to curl in on the sides, you can see. When I am talking about drooping <laughs> soft leaves, this is exactly what I am talking about here. So I think that this is a very good prime example for um, a dehydrated plant. As always, the plant will usually start to kind of deflate on the lower leaves first, and then as the drought, progresses and gets more serious to the plant, you will start seeing the top leaves also begin to droop. So you can see that they're a little bit more firmer and stable than these leaves down here, but they are already losing a little bit of that um, solidness. <laughs> <laughs> to fix this, it's not a big deal. You just need to get back to consistent watering and figure out the watering schedule that makes sense for your plant and your environment and your lifestyle. Most likely I will lose one or two of these lower leaves that are a little bit unhappy right now. And once they do yellow and the plant kind of gives up on those leaves, I'll just go ahead and prune them off. I will go ahead and water this plant. <clears throat> the one thing that I want to mention about consistent underwatering with philodendrons, this isn't always a concern, but it is something to keep in the back of your mind that plants, especially with weaker, frailer root systems like peperomia, for example, if you are consistently underwatering those plants, the roots are going to start to dry up and shrivel. And then when you do introduce water to the pot, there might not be a strong enough root system to actually absorb up all of that water. You actually might end up with root rot regardless. <laughs> Usually root rot happens from overwatering. However, you can also actually get root rot if you underwater your plant for a long time, introduce a ton of water to the pot, and then the roots are just sitting in water rotting. <laughs> Underwatering is kind of like a minor issue. It's usually fairly simple to bounce back from, but I do want to highlight the fact that you can get root rot from underwatering. So I'm going to make sure 
that I give this little plant a drink and prune those leaves and we should get back on track. All right, next plant I wanna talk about today, this Stromanthe Trio Star. Who saw this coming when I pulled it out in a haul? <laughs> I did, but I wanted to give it a go. All in all, this plant actually isn't doing all that bad. You can see a few little roots starting to pop out on the bottom, so I am getting root growth. And I have had a few new leaves pop up. You can even see two coming in right now. I have one here and then one here. She's not miserable, but one thing that I particularly struggle with year round actually in this house is humidity. That is because I have central now. So I have central heating, but also air conditioning. And it's really hard to maintain a consistent humidity level across the entire house. Stromanthe, if you don't know, really appreciate high humidity. When they don't get enough consistent watering or high humidity, you will end up with leaves that look like this, which are very crispy on the edges and it'll slowly kind of start to bleed in and eventually the leaf will just shrivel up um, and basically die off. In the winter time, this becomes a very common issue for a lot of houseplant owners because you are cranking that dry heat up. My favorite solution is hands down a humidifier. I have humidifiers that I use and love linked in my description box. They are in my Amazon shop. If you wanna know what humidifiers I use, that's where you can find them. I don't recommend misting. It's a very short term, like I'm talking like maybe five minute solution for your plant. And on top of that, you might actually promote bacteria growth on the leaves. Pebble trees, I think are hit or miss. I haven't tried it personally. I've heard very mixed reviews on that. Oh, another thing that I think is a decent solution is plant clumping kind of. So you put a bunch of house plants together and they kind of make their own little like humidity family bubble. If you can't do a humidifier, I would recommend putting your high humidity loving plants together and then put them in a room that naturally has a little bit of higher humidity, such as a bathroom with a window or maybe a kitchen. Typically the steam from cooking consistently or showering provides a boost of humidity for your plant. I do recommend getting a humidifier, but if not, there are a few solutions that you can do. And then hopefully you can avoid those little crispy leaves. She is not by a humidifier, by the way, which is <laughs> bad. It's kind of hard to have one of these without any crisping. So all in all, I'm happy with this plant and her growth. This is one of the newer leaves. It's so precious. No biggie, it's okay, it happens. But I just wanted to point that out because it's a common winter problem. Okay, in the same vein, these are all gonna be very similar, but I wanna talk about my begonia. Here I have a begonia. Shoot. Begonia Maurice Amy, I wanna say. And she looks all right, but what you don't see is that she's had pretty much two leaves her entire life. Whenever she puts out a new one, she drops the old one. I've noticed that Begonia and Syngonium do not like my house. They do not like the central. They do not like how the heat is dispersed. <laughs> across my house. They have been having a little bit of a hard time since I moved this last summer. I think that with begonia, they are a bit temperature sensitive. There are so many begonia, so I am gonna be generalizing here. But in my experience, I've noticed that my begonia are very sensitive to temperature changes. And of course, in the winter time, things get really cold and it's kind of hard to keep your house at a consistent warm temperature. For example, in my house, I can set it to, if I'm feeling crazy, 74, which is what I love, but that's a little crazy. So I can set it to 74 and that'll kind of, you know, make the first floor nice and warm. But up here, it actually gets very, very cold and it sits around like 68, 69. And I would love for this plant to be at least in a 72 degree environment. I have definitely, I have definitely noticed that begonia are super sensitive to being too close to a window in the winter or um, by a vent or something like that. If you are noticing that a lot of your plants are declining at once, it might be a temperature issue, believe it or not. It really depends on your home and the plant's environment. This one, you know, to kind of take with a grain of salt, know your house, know your environment a little bit. I also really recommend getting, hold on. 
I really recommend getting um, this little Firm Pro humidity and temp reader. Also linked down below in my description box. Sorry for all the plugs. But as you, you can see, it's 69 here, up here, but that is not what my house is set to. My house is set to 72. It actually might be 74 right now. But this, if you get one of these, you can kind of plop them in different areas of your home so you can get a more a specific read on what your plants are experiencing. 69 is not ideal for this plant and she has definitely uh, gotten cold near a window before as well. Just be careful about that, especially around this time of year. In the summer, it's more of a sun strength issue and if your plants are too close to the window, they might get burnt. When it is the winter time, it is a temperature thing. So just be careful about that and do research. All right, next plant I wanna talk about is, okay, let's do this one actually. I haven't talked about this plant in a minute. It is my Schifflera arboricola. All in all, she's doing all right. Let me give you a little peek at her leaves. She started with me actually in like a two and a half inch, three inch pot. It was like one of those um, little like terrarium plugs that you can get at like Whole Foods and stuff like that. So that's how she started. And to have her sitting in this, it's either, I think it's an eight inch pot, is pretty amazing. And I do really, really love her because I, I, I've seen her grow from like such a little baby. I have a soft spot for her. I have been purging a few of my troublemaker plants but this one I can't bring myself to do. So she does look okay, you can kind of see, but I have been getting a bunch of the, a uh, few of the branches kind of getting this pale yellow color. And then if you look at the back of some of them, I have this like interesting, let's see, let's get it to focus. I have these interesting little brown specks that have been kind of popping up on some of these clusters. I will be honest with you all, there's a few things that could be going wrong here. I'm not 100% certain on what exactly is irritating this plant. This plant was extremely root bound for a very long time to the point where I had roots growing out of the top of the pot, which is really bad. So she was a bit stressed. I repotted her into this pot. Thought it would help, but I think the other thing going on is that I do have this plant a bit too close to the window. A lot of more uh, tree-like plants like Schifflera arboricolas do like a lot of light, they do. So that's why I shoved it right into a southern facing window. She has been like holding on, she's not dying, but I do notice some of this bleaching pop up here and there. I have these little spots and it does feel a little bit like an overexposure to light issue is my guess. It could also maybe be nutrient related, but I'm, I'm not super knowledgeable in that department. I have noticed that ever since I've been giving her a bit more uh, liquid art consistently, she has been a little bit happier. So I'm hoping that a balance between the liquid art and then maybe I will move her away from this window. Maybe I will do it one day. I just really like her there. <laughs> this is one of those plants where am I 100% certain on what exactly is wrong? No, but that's okay. I can kind of troubleshoot, take into account some of the recent things this plant has been through and just kind of work from there. If you are super confused about a house plant, you don't really know what's going on, just think about the, you know, classic care things that you have to do. So think about water, think about light, think about repotting, think about fertilizing and do research on your plant and just compare as like to what you're doing and just see if you can kind of play around with your routine a bit and troubleshoot. And she should be okay. She's not falling apart, but I did want to show an example of a plant where, you know, she's not a hundred percent, but I'm also not a hundred percent as to what's going on. And that's okay. Just want to normalize that a little bit and remind everyone that I don't have all of the answers. <laughs> That's the Shuffler Arboricola. And then we have one more plant and that is, this is a nice plant actually. I'm a little bummed she's in this list. It is my Philodendron, my variegated Philodendron Burl Marks. If I can get her to focus. She is a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. I have talked about her before. 
And I mentioned, I never thought I would actually have this plant in my collection because they can get a bit expensive and it wasn't one that I was completely fixated on, but it was sent to me and that is part of the issue. This is a plant that is recovering from shipment still. It was sent to me a few months ago and I am still kind of babying this plant back to life. I wanted to show this plant to be a little bit realistic about what shipping, especially from overseas, this plant came from Indonesia. It does traumatize the plant quite a bit, especially because this plant was shipped to me as it started to get colder over here in Philly. Probably has like a little bit of cold damage, grumpy about the shipping. There's a few different things going on here. What I do to alleviate some of that stress with the plant is I kept the cutting in a prop box for a while just so I had prime conditions to bounce back a little bit, start throwing out some new growth that you can see here, and also strengthen the root system a bit. I did get a little bit of root growth while she was in there. And then I potted her up. I didn't want to wait too long because I didn't want the plant to have to reacclimate to my home environment. I kind of just wanted to give a little bit of a kickstart to her and then plop her right in soil and acclimate her to my home. Now she is a philodendron and philodendrons are pretty resilient when it comes to shipping, when it comes to propagating, when it comes to just, you know, human error. So she will be okay and they push out growth fairly quickly. I have this little baby leaf coming in and I have a leaf coming in over here, if you can see. She's not falling apart, you know, she's doing her thing. But again, just be careful when you are ordering plants, specifically from overseas, and also when it is not prime plant ordering season. Okay, and those are all of the plants I am currently struggling with. I kind of pulled back the curtain a little bit, showed you guys what's going on. I hope you enjoyed. Please comment down below what plants you are struggling with. We can have a little pity party as always. We're here for each other. Huge thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video if you wanna check them out. Again, first thousand subscribers to click that link will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. And I think that's it, so please subscribe like this video, hit that notification bell, all that good stuff. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Huge thank you to all of my members. Thank you to O'Neill, Val, Katrina, Audrey, Louie, Heather, underscore B, Jacqueline, Brooke, Daniel, Vanessa, Michelle, Tori, Candy, and Pam. You guys are the best and I'll see you in my next video.